Wow, today grandma goes to the farm. But before we send grandma to the farm, I've been asked to share with you a very special public service announcement. I received a request earlier from none other than Oscar of Vanilla Expanded Fame, who approached me down on his knees. He crawled towards me in prostration and said, Oh, Mr. Samuel Streamer, who is far more famous and handsome than I could ever hope to be, please tell the people, spread the word about my hard work upon the Vanilla Expanded Law book. Available for the low, low price of $5 from the Vanilla Expanded Patreon. It's a downloadable digital PDF that you can keep forever. You too can read a whole bunch of lore. I have a copy of this very same lore book, and though it pains me to say, it is very, 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 very nice. And if you are a fan of Remod, if you're a fan of any of my content, and of course the Vanilla Expanded team, you could do yourself a favor by spending five little dollars on this very, very fancy book. The Vanilla Expanded team did not invent the remote world. This work time in Sylvester and merely expanded the vision and directions that they thought needed expanded. The work is by no means special and is written by a team of modders. Please support the official release. <laughs> etc. etc. If you need any more convincing other than your most trusted good friend, Mr. Samuel Streamer, in the word of Oscar, very famous remote modder, but not quite as famous as me, Oscar, then there is also a free version of which you can flick through and take a look and see if, yes, this really does take your fancy, which it will, because Jesus Christ, that scared the life out of me. <laughs> anyway, please have a look. Thank you. I would appreciate it. And today, we're putting Grandma on the farm. Rim Rims, it's Jewelry Egypt time, and we're opening strong today with uh, new lovers, apparently. What the hell? Don't, no, I'm not saying you should open new lovers. Adram and Palatinate. Oh. Well, that is fantastic. The, the dynasty of the kings continue once again. How old is she? She's 23. He is... 18. That's a good combo. And she is really, really, really good. Cooking 18 double passion. She's got very good plant skill as well. Hey, that seems pretty good. Why don't we try? Okay, maybe this is already overthinking it. I, I, I was... I, I'm about to suggest eugenics, okay? Sit down. Get comfortable. Forget about grandma going to the farm for a moment. We've established that characters not only gain a combination of traits from their parents with some aspects of randomness, but their skills and their, their abilities are also influenced by their parents. What if... We take Adram, and we take Palatinate, and we sit them in a room, and we make them research all day, every day. We get their skills as high as possible, so that when Babby is formed, and butts are touched, then that baby will come out with skills far greater than anyone else in this colony. I think I'm in. Now, before I get too carried away with rather uh, rather questionable um, ethics practices here in this colony by forcing two young adults to work non-stop on their big brain powers so they can breed a bigger brain baby, we need to sort out the population of our colony. Now, it's a very sad time when I have to say it, but it's always inevitable in many series, particularly the more uh, involved and, and uh, character-heavy ones. The game is running to a crawl. More specifically, uh, the game is running at sometimes less than 100 TPS, which really, it's horrible. It's horrible to play. I brought up at the end of yesterday's episode that some of these older characters are, like, for example, Aronidas is 92, uh, Brody is 99 years of age. As our medicine improves, as our doctors improves, as our hospital improves, the tend quality of their old age is going to improve, much as it did, of course, in reality. Medicine get good, old people live longer. But hey, here's a controversial opinion. Fuck old people. You're useless and you smell bad. Anybody over the age of 40, give up. Your days in society are numbered, my friend. You're over. Your prime is done. Stand aside. Let the younger generation take over. That's a, that's a dangerous thing to say, given that my audience skews more towards 40 than it does to 13. That's okay. We're all friends here. That's a good joke. What I suggested is, is two things at the end of yesterday's episode. Either way, we could add a ritual where they, um, Give their lives for the gods, as in we're going to make them uh, trip into the river and never come back. Or, secondly, we could put Grandma on a farm. And many people in the comments were like, please, for the love of God, don't mass kill your old people. So fine, you've won me over. We're going to set up a lovely farm. Now, what I was thinking is, sure, we could put it in the desert where it's, like, convenient and close and blah, blah, blah. Or... We use the Quadream to set up an old person uh, transport service where anybody who isn't a special character in the colony, so not Brody because he's high priest, not Glasses because he is the, uh, he's the vizier, but anybody over the age of a certain amount who isn't contributing at all to the colony, like for example, Ronadas with his six conditions needs ending. I'm sorry, old man, but you are one. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ronadas is one sneeze off of dying horribly. So instead of him dying horribly here, we, they could sacrifice the blessings of the gods. They don't get the side powers or anything else, but they age at a normal rate and we let them go and retire. 
for their, for their contribution. This is a gift, effectively, for their contribution to the colony. We can go and set up somewhere, a luxury place for the old people to live. We could put them on a goddamn tropical island. What about, like, right here? What is that? A savanna. Oh, that is lovely. We could set, they could have, uh, m m uh, like, Mai Tais on the beach, and they can lounge around, and they can die somewhere where I don't have to worry about them bringing this game to a crawling halt. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We could set up a, oh, no, there, actually, there's only one way I think about it in hindsight. The only way we can send people to our settlements out there in the world is if they're prisoners. And I'm not going to arrest the old people, because it will put too much strain on their heart, and it might explode. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to fill up the ship, we're going to send them out into the world. We've got plenty of fuel. Send them out into the world, and we're going to set up an outpost using Vanilla Outpost. Who would like to go and set up the old person farm? Uh, Aronidas is 93. I think we should say everybody above life expectancy. Life expectancy for humans in Rimworld is 80. So we're going to say everybody above 80 years of age, you can go to the farm and retire. Um, so that's Rudy through to Aronidas. It's only four people. It's only four people for now. And if for whatever mad reason we want them back... We can just go and we can we can take them out. Not as in like kill them like I was planning on doing before everybody complained. <laughs> or alternatively, we say when they hit old age, that's when we send them off. The reason I say that is a look. Brody is hospitalized, but is high priest, so I'll allow it. Everybody else, all the other old people are just permanently lying in bed. So I think that's probably when we kick them out, right? Then we're going to say to the old people, pack your swimming trunks, you're free. We're going to take off their military outfits. Someone can have some stinky, I presume, piss-laden old person clothes. Probably don't want it. We're not giving them a choice. Plasteel is expensive. Uh, pla Plasteel is machine washable. Don't worry. Oh, God. There's a bunch of naked old people coming out of the hospital. Oh, Jesus. There you go. Look at that. Look at how happy they are to be retiring and not be horribly gun- Look at how happy they are. <laughs> if there's ever a sign we need to retire these people, that right there, that's it. Now, somebody needs to drive the old person bus. And you know what? I think the Pharaoh should do it. I think the Pharaoh should see them off and, and you know, send them to pastures new. We're going to send them with the giraffe and uh, Desiree that I was supposed to, give to the, supposed to give to the people who visited them last time, but forgot. And there we go. Goodbye to the oldest and greatest generation of Jerry Egyptians. I was going to set them up on that tropical island. And I mean, the best part is that way, if they want to come back, they can't. <laughs> Some of you may view this as me stranding the old and vulnerable on a desert island. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can't argue with that. I mean, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly what I'm doing. Now, that seems more manageable. There we are. We can actually see all of the colonists, 24 of them. 25, of course, when steroid comes back to. We're going to have to rename our brand new senators now that we've made an official alliance with the Western Republic. We have Helvia, Brutus, Caecilius, Titor, and Servius, and all of their very fancy bonuses that they give. I think this one was the really good one, right? Yeah, mental breaks can't happen when drafted. It's so good. You two will end up here one day. You will end up with a bunch of other old people on a tropical island in the middle of nowhere carried over here by a pharaoh on the back of a flying quad dream. Farming outpost, we could literally put grandma on a farm. Hunting, logging. <laughs> I like... <laughs> Hold on. I like... <laughs> Set for... <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, uh... <laughs> Ooh, there's just something about unbridled cruelty towards old people that really just gets me going. We can set up a hunting outpost and force them to uh, survive out here by hunting horrible monsters. You know what? I'm in. Oh, shit. Uh, hang on, hang on. Remove pawn. Uh, wait, pack? Pack in the character? No, no, no. Remove. Uh, steroid. Ah, oh, shit. Can I give him the quad dream? Hang on. And then we say steroid. Uh, take. Quad dream. Yes, we're good. We're fine. Everything's okay. There you go. And we can launch. We can head back out. Everything's fine. I'm actually very, very impressed that works. And he's gone. Wow, we've set up our hunting outpost for the old people on the tropical island. They're hunting Muffalo right now. Uh, I want them to hunt Hippo, the most dangerous creature. Oh, God, I've got tears in my eyes. I don't know. I just... When we put them on the ship, I was expecting, you know, cocktails by the beach, not them 96-year-old man fighting for his life against angry Hippo. <laughs> Steroids home and the old people are uh, presumably happy. I thought I'd do a little math and see what we're looking at right now. So the average age of the colony, now that the old people have been sent to a luxury, dead, tropical 
paradise. Uh, the average age is 40. Uh, 40.99 specifically, so I suppose 41. Significantly better than when Wes and Dodgy Dave were in charge. Dodgy Dave, oh, look, he was a healer. The man wanted to save everybody. The problem is that meant these old ass people are living till ridiculous ages because of his changes to the medicine. I mean, we've got some really, really good medicine because of what Dodgy Dave did. Now everybody's going to live to forever. And that is with Brody adding on almost a hundred to the to the average. Turns out Sweetie is 91. Uh, and I missed that entirely. So she's gonna take uh on the next on the next boat. We'll ship her out. Uh, Milky 173. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking maybe when they just get old age is when we could ship them off. I think that might be the best time to do it. So obviously Sweetie has old age, and uh, but but instead of going by when they hit an arbitrary number, because they could still be fine. You know, they might not be affected by old age. Sure, Milky One's missing a whole bunch of stuff, but he doesn't still have old age, right? Simultaneously, there might be some people who get super, super unlucky and hit old age at the age of 70, at which point we can ship them off a lot sooner. So I think that makes, uh, I, I think that's a much better thing. When, when they're too old to work, that's when we'll send them to paradise. That's what, we're, that's what we're calling it. And on the subject of old ass people, steroid is about to turn 60. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Jerry stepped down when he was, he was like 65, right? And I think in turn, Wes stopped being Pharaoh when he was about 65 as well. Wes is still alive, just to clarify. A few people are a little confused on that one. So we have, <laughs> whenever there's an eclipse, whenever the sun disappears, because of course we worship the sun god Oscar here, there is a chance that the dead can stand up and walk again unless you cremate the bodies. And of course, because we've been burying some of our people, we've buried Wes's body in the, uh, the Tomb of Heroes. I don't know who was in the other one, but two of them disappeared. In fact, can we see the storage? Will that show who... Oh, I guess not. Uh, what, the, what about the assignment tab? Nothing there. Nothing there. Okay, fair enough. He was buried in one of them, anyway, and he's disappeared along with whoever was in the other one, too. When an eclipse happens, there's a chance the dead can walk away. And that's exactly what's happened. He's went and joined the um, Eastern Republic, but he, he's joined them as an ally. He's just gone off to go and be uh, friendly. Maybe he's learned from the error of his ways. Who knows? I think we should say when a pharaoh hits 60 is when they retire. And they don't, like, retire entirely. They just instead gain the uh, um, the pharaoh emeritus role. They become a firekeeper. They take a bit more of a, a background role and pave the way. And it's kind of perfect timing because Adran's 18. Pretty much the perfect age to take over and become pharaoh, right? I think the next thing to do is rename some of these colonists because having a guy kicking around called Brutus in a uh, hereditary dictatorship where the Senate has almost no power probably isn't good to that long-term life expectancy I was just talking about. I think with a handful of spreadsheets and going back through character pages for the past half an hour, I've got everybody down who is... Part of which families, everybody renamed to. Um, quick as well, I suppose we could check that. Let's just look at our brand new senators. We have King Snitch, Herbolf, Huderman, Bobson, Dugner, and Tasty Rutherford. <laughs> I've given people the adequate ranks as well if they are a dynasty head. So uh, anybody with the wreath is a dynasty head. So Milky One there being one. Lumpy, I think, is also a family head. Given that old man Aronidus is now at the farm where he's living out a luxury life being chased by hippos. Dip did one of our senators just turn out to be a traitor? Quantum Nova. Oh, it's a bad day to be you, my friend. Holy crap. Um, whale on him. <laughs> no, 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 no. You joined right at the end of yesterday. You were a, a lover of a colonist we already had. Or, or more specifically, you were already a lover of a colonist that we had. Oh, shit. Well, we can always re-recruit you. That's not a problem. Annoyingly, you've got, like, really, really good armor. Just be very careful. No! You piss head. Oh, what a waste of perfectly good armor. I know someone's going to be upset that we just cut down their lover. Adram does not. Oh my god, that is cold. <laughs> How dare you interrupt Adram's study time. Picks up the body, throws it in the furnace, and carries on as if nothing happened. He just, just scoops the blood off the desk and throws it on the floor. That's completely fine. DQ is pregnant. DQ, aren't you like 70? 67? Oh, weird. The way it works is the fertility just stacks up so it's lower and lower. Minus 80%. But there is still a chance with minus 80%, obviously. Huh. Well, that's very strange. Maybe medicine went too far. <gasps> but hang on. I think that means that you may have just saved the, uh, the Struka dynasty. Old man Timo himself would be smiling from... Well, hell, he, he went to hell. There aren't any other surviving family members, right? Uh, social tab. Brother, Constantine Glasses. Wait, brother, Constantine Glasses. That's you. 
<laughs> Everything's very broken. <laughs> right, that's it. You were married to Romulus who died. I remember. But you don't have any other living relatives. Felicia King, very distantly relative. Of course, steroid is distantly relative. But you're the one who, who inherited the family name. So this is going to... And who was it? Uh, DQ. Uh, so it's going to be uh, whatever, baby Strooker Avion Queen. That's nice. I like that. Well, happy day, I suppose. How old are you? 60. He's 60. I think it's time we pass the torch. Is Adram ready? 19 and 22 days. I mean, he's, he's so good. Very big brain. Finish the last of the medieval tech. Maybe it's time we focus on going... On, on going industrial. Oh, that's pretty nice. Steroid talks about joining and growing people here of Jerry Egypt. We are here to witness the, the, the crowning of the new pharaoh Adram. Choose the right beliefs. The belief in our god Oskra. We must unite for this greater good. Etc. Etc. Et Adram's like, I'm so glad we have comfortable furniture. Nobody wants to be a pharaoh of an uncomfortable kingdom. My god. This goes on for eight hours and they age 20 times faster. This is taken months off of their life. <laughs> Steroid has given up on the speech. He's just decided to whistle a tune. Probably this one. Boom. Satisfying pharaoh's initiation. The silent level of participants have been upgraded. All participants. Evidently not, given that Neo doesn't have anything. He can, though, have another ritual immediately. No. Let Adram do that festival. That might be a nice way to help cement his new rule as, as Pharaoh. So with that, Steroid becomes Pharaoh Emeritus, now at the ripe old age of 60. I feel like that absolutely flew by. Oh, Steroid talks about thankfulness. That's nice. He's given his, his kind of retirement speech, his farewell, his desire to serve the community even in his old age. What a great guy. Oh! Wait, Aronidas died? What do you mean? One of this has died calls missing body part. What, old man Aronidas at the farm? I say farm, it's a... I say a hippo survival island. Wait, you... I didn't even know they could die like that. Um, bio? Social? Yeah, he's dead all right. Holy crap, so they can still die out there in the wild. Holy crap. Yes, the hippo must have took his arm off. And then there's sweets, you're just on the floor. <laughs> Look, this is a problem we're never gonna have to worry about again, okay? We got the old person farm set up. This is this is the last time we have to worry about this shit. Why are they all naked? Where are your clothes? Oh, you're in a pool. That's fine. Come on, let's see a blessing for the new pharaoh. Give everybody that sigh link. Come on. You know what? I think we'll take that as a sign that this was the right decision. It was unforgettable. Everybody learned about each other and felt like a family. That's because you are. You're all horribly, horribly, horribly inbred. Wow. And taxes. Oh, that's good. First things first, as we do with every pharaoh, we need a statue to celebrate the brand new Adram. Could you have not have waited 30 more seconds, for God's sake? Who is our artist now that old man Herodotus is gone? Well, like dead. But mangled by a hippo, no less. Uh, make a large sculpture. We might already have one in storage. Oh, we got shitloads. We need to make a statue of colonists, though, you fool. Dube, no pressure. 14 artistic. You are, you've are. you got a long way to go before you are at the same level as old man Herodotus with his 20 crafting. That's the problem with these senators. Obviously, we're getting them when they're already 30, 40 years of age, so educating them isn't so useful. I will queue up art for you, though, just so that we can get you working that way. Oh, or we could just have you do art all day. It's probably a bit more productive than having to sit behind a desk. I thought, given that Steroid was no longer Pharaoh, we could give him the royal hood instead and just match his gear. And I think that's quite a cool outfit, but it means that we also need something for Adram. And it turns out, looking at the armor stuff that we've got, the Teostra Leather Ravager armor that we made ages and ages ago, I think for Wes, that we've still got kicking around, is the best gear that we've got. Like, it's, it's really good. It's almost as good as... What steroid is currently wearing in every stat besides blunt, but even then it's like, what, 4% in it, so it doesn't really matter. Wherever that is, if we just heal that back up, yeah, he's basically set up. A couple of dings from High Priest Brody, and it should be as good as new, right? 260 health. Okay, it might take a little longer, but we have another Tenomancer, right? Her wolf, what the hell do you think you're wearing? 82%? I'd say that's pretty much good as new, right? Nadram is a pretty good fighter. Not the best, but still probably good enough to go on the front line, to be honest with you. 178% sharp. I think you're fine. And a little weapon swap for those two as well. Nadram has established a bond with the persona of Sword of Ra. Excellent. Because they're related. That's how it works. 
and I don't care if you think otherwise. <laughs> That's definitely how it works, okay? What's the persona bot on this one? Painless and psychic sensitizer. Oh, cool. Weapon amplifies the wielder's psychic sensitivity by 20%. Painless actually sucks. The one holding the weapon will feel no pain in any way, as in Adran will fight until he gets like a lethal hit. Oh god, there's so much to keep up with now. Uh, it's just, it's just, we've gone too deep. Adram is a Night Stalker. What the hell is a Night Stalker? Uh, gives them a membrane that allows them to see equally and well in darkness and daytime. That's cool, but we still have the negative effect of the actual ideology making them shitty at nighttime to fight in, right? Darkness. Oh god, this sounds bloody cursed. Select an area to generate an orb of darkness. No, you're supposed to be worshippers of the sun. This is this is not right at all. Well, okay. All right, let's go for it then. All vision is blocked and any attacks within or passing through will miss entirely. This sounds, this sounds horrible. This doesn't sound right for our Pharaoh, but I mean, that's what he was given randomly, right? So that's what we're going to go with. I'm just going to have steroid auto cast these. I went for psychic soothe female. We go for psychic soothe male next just to keep it even. Yeah, I'm just going to have him cast those automatically and see what comes out of it. We can't also cast Word of Love for, I mean, fairly obvious reasons. Tamate, now that you've recovered how you're looking. So I was told that the uh, skip doors, apparently I could have read this. Uh, anyway, the skip doors will prevent Tetmate's heat reducing while he is, uh, uh, while, while he's got it active. So I've disabled the other skip door, hence why he's back at zero now. We'll have to upgrade his, his base level so that he can maintain it, so that he's actually still useful, right? But we'll go ahead and finish Skip Master. Oh, what do we want to do then? Do we want to upgrade maybe his focus type? Do we want to upgrade the Psycaster stat? Or do we want to go for Chronopath? Which was the whole point of Tetmate. It's so bloody good. I can't... I can't not do it. Time skip meditation is just insanely good when you've got an immortal robot. Brody can make a steel construct. That sounds fantastic. We've got haywire or heat pearls. I think we'll just go with that one for now so that we can head up to the top. What's this one do? Craft siren. Oh! Psycasting knowledge of the cast. When we'll buy another psycaster, allows me to use the knowledge to perform the style. Okay, so we can put a psycast in a ring and that gives them the ability to use it. Oh man, that's good though. We'd have to basically go through two or not, or not such a useful one there with the, with the EMP to get up to it. Shit, and what is this one? Reverse Engineer. Unravel the knowledge needs to manufacture more of them. Oh, so potentially unlocks a... Oh, some, some technology for us. That could be nuts. Glasses. In his old age became a conflagrator, which is fine. I'm all right with that one. Sweetie has nothing. Milky is still Skip Master. Let's just go ahead and finish this tree for you. Harmonist. Harmonist is not one we've seen before. Dampens the caster's sight, hearing, movement, and manipulation in exchange for overcharging the target's own physical abilities. Oh, cool. So DQ, given that she's getting older now, might not be such a good fighter. Although with a 20 shooting, I've got to disagree. What we could do is have her harmonize a steroid and have him become an even better fighter. That works really, really well with the Warlord tree that Wes had. That seems like that could be a really good combo. More skip masters for Lumpy. We've got another empath for Do, but that's fine. We'll just have word of joy on casting. Sideshow became another Static Lord. That's what I like to see. I think Static Lord is so... Uh, that's just going to be essential to keeping the uh, the base defended as we get more and more and more wealth. So did Bobson. This is, the, this is incredible. That was the best day of my life. Necropath. Ooh. Induces panic by overloading the flight response system for a short duration considered a hostile action. Word of fear. We also cast that. Oh, shit. All right, so we're going to hit an enemy and make them run. That sounds really useful. Honestly, that sounds so good. It might be good to save that for, like, the big boss enemies of raids and use it on someone who might be particularly difficult to get through. Say an enemy spawns in with really good gear, maybe made out of the Elder Dragon leather like our people have. That sounds like that could be too good to... Oh, my God, another Static Lord. Sounds like that could be too good not to micromanage, basically. Another few points in Conflagrator. Oh, this is so dangerous. Maybe we go for Fire Shield. Maybe we go for that one and put that on Autocast. No, maybe not Self Explosion. <laughs> Another Necropath. Oh, we put both on Word of Fear and have the enemy. Another Necropath. What was that? Four Static Lords and a bunch of Necropath. That's great. Archon is cool. And we can Autocast that as well. Uh, Night Stalker for Tasty Rutherford 2, which we can Autocast. 
I'm, maybe I'm looking at that wrong. Maybe I'm thinking, okay, it's not very good because we already suffer from the combat negative at night time. Maybe I should be looking at it as it gets rid of the combat negative at night time. Got another static lord. This is actually nuts. Palatinate became a warlord. That's cool. Again, we'll have you also casting that one because this is... I'm not I'm not going to micromanage 25 different side casters for every battle. That seems nuts. I'm just going to let them burn the entire base down. <laughs> another side caster. The fully old became uh, a static lord. Good God. Uh, and that's everybody. All right, it's done. The next raid is just going to get immolated. And there you have it. The future of the King Dynasty Palatinate is pregnant. That was bloody fast going. And I didn't even get a chance to work on the eugenics. <laughs> but in theory, that idea should work perfectly, right? If you have two adults with 20 skills across the board, say they're immortal or whatever, the kid that they have is going to be actually insane like like ridiculously good i think it's time we set adram loose on the researching then huh let's get to work and uh, honestly the first part of the industrial revolution being printing is pretty much bang on that seems like a great idea adram is good though but steroid is still better and given that he's far emeritus i think it's a good idea just to keep him on there helping out as well why has he got <laughs> He's got eyes in the back of his head. That's horrifying. I think I'm going to set up a desk for everybody, too. It would be far more sensible now, given that we're moving into the industrial era. Uh, of course, technology is still going to be limited. We're still going to try and keep it as medieval slash primitive as possible as we are right now. I think it would make more sense to have everybody work into their strengths rather than just going for generic good stuff to do. Because there isn't a huge amount to do in the colony, right? Might as well make sure that the next generation has all the essential skills, which at this point is just growing plants and cooking food. But there's not really a huge amount else to do. Artistry could be good. Always having a dedicated miner is going to be pretty nice as well. But simultaneously, having people learning just means that we're not doing enough with them, right? So having people crafting or mining, built a couple of mines here, that just makes way more sense. It would be better if people were actually mining instead of, because uh, I mean, they're at least contributing that way, right? Having them doing some sort of quarrying or mining rather than learning, if there's a free mine to do it in. God, that's slow. Oh, it shouldn't take that long just to change some jobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and copy from little Adram. There you go. Boom. Why is he so much smaller than all the other ones? <laughs> Did I accidentally make the wrong size? That's a little bit insulting to the pharaoh. I'm sorry. Uh, stat is like huge statue of colonist. Yeah, that's my bad. Once we get a bit more plastic, they can start working on some new gear too. Because we got a lot of people just wearing basic clothes because we haven't got anything else for them. Hopefully we can sort that out before the next raid turns up. Or, oh, they finished all the trebuchets. Oh, that's cool. You see, that's a pretty massive research for our dram to kick things off with. We could do a dedicated printing room. I think that's a good idea. Granted, we're kind of running out of... <laughs> we're running out of place to build dedicated rooms. If I cut back on the bookshelves slightly, which are purely for decoration, get rid of that and, and build a printing room just maybe in the middle of the temple, that would make... Oh, oh, the library. That would make a lot more sense. We do get that joy boost out of that, but we could also use it to actually finally start writing down some of the pharaoh, pharaoh's final words without the pharaoh immediately lighting fire to it. We still have a couple of Jerry's books, but they're the, they're the shit ones. And a pretty much empty learning room is, is exactly what we want, because that means they're actually doing something useful for the colony instead, right? Harvesting hops, we've got people working the mine now. We had nobody stone cutting for ages, so we've, we've, we've not had any more blocks, because I wanted to do another... I wanted to do an expansion on this side the same way we did on this side, so that it looks... I, I just thought it would look a lot nicer. With the printing room as well, we might actually have reason to have 24 people at once, rather than just having them sitting around all day learning about skills that they might never use. What was that? What did I just see then? Grand... Am I going nuts? What the hell was that? <gasps> Grand Gate. A huge entrance for a cometic city. It's off center. Oh, no. <laughs> From alpha memes. I I am honored. I am honored to have a mighty gate for the city. Um <laughs> but it's off center. <laughs> I can make it work. I can make it work. Don't worry. This this is fine. I I I appreciate this enormously. I can make this I can make this happen. Oh, it looks so cool as well. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. This will work perfectly. I'm just going to have to move the entire entrance over one block, but that's okay. We've got Tetmate here. Legendary builder. It's all good. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh, the timing on the music. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. That's a lot of people. Nine. You're a goddamn liar. How many is it? 99. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, thank God I wasn't doing anything, uh, you know, potentially devastating like removing the front gate. Shit. It's the mother-in-law of Bang Power. Well... That's tomorrow's problem. I think we'll be fine. We've got so many sidecasters, we're probably going to annihilate them. Join me tomorrow, why don't you, to see if we can survive the biggest raid we've ever had as we redo the entrance to the base. <laughs> Excellent work. Excellent work. Thank you, of course, to the patrons. Patrons, thanks for bearing with me. I t I've taken a bit of a break over the past few days from all social media. Uh, Discord, I just completely dropped off the face of the earth because I, I'm burning the candle at both ends and the candle is burnt. There is no more candle. It is gone now. Uh, so I'm just putting all my focus into making sure we get at least one episode a day. I'm going to try and start a second channel series too. And I'm just going to put all my effort into making sure the content is consistent and coming out on time while I deal with everything else that's going on right now. And then hopefully we're back to normal soon. I've been saying that for a long time, but... Jesus. Guys, there is no more candle left. Thank you to Chief Chair, Yam, Nicholas Carnifax, Fisher, Ryan Duffy, Slippy Nips, Diana Plants, Speedy, Irish Commissar, Sideshow C, Terry Dactyl, Donald Jones, Five Cats, Cracker Dacker, Vincent E. Muss, Alex Warren, Lapis Golem, Boop, Luskanai, Cake Hardware, Arabs, Azazol, Validus, Comrade Zandy Candy, and Joshua Cripps as well for their support. The executive producer stays over on Patreon. Thank you for allowing the channel to continue despite currently ongoing matters. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you for being here. I hope you're still enjoying the series. Numbers are up, so clearly someone's enjoying something. Uh, bizarrely. Thank you as well to Dune Nukem 64X, Crafted Plays, Luke Croft, Noisy Koi, Coconut Rooter, Babe Lincoln, Mr. Meeseeks, Freckers, James Beaton, Frigil F, Wrinklestein, Ellie IMP, The Murph, Tades Kredgy, Aaron McBride, Linus L, Snowy1237, Mugwump, Daniel Price, Ace of Hearts, Parsasol, Big Seguro, and Megaton. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. As I've said before, the series will be coming to an end probably sooner rather than later, only because, unfortunately, we've hit the, the, the limit of Rimworld. You know, there, there's not much more I can do. I can't get any more performance anywhere else. There are no performance-impacting mods going on right now other than just kind of the UI stuff. So, we've pushed it to its limits. I have no idea what's coming next. Stay tuned.